Today, we will talk about Cinematic Adventures, 10 games that play like interactive movies. Remember these so-called games? Many people thought they didn't even deserve to be called games and liked to call them interactive movies instead. While they were somewhat different, they all shared some notable similarities. They were all developed in the 90s. At the height and start of the CD-ROM-based media, they always included more or less full-motion video cutscenes and actual gameplay, either filmed or in post upon green slash blue screens and combined with 2D slash 3D objects. 1. The Seven Guest Is this it? Even if you ignore the extremely big impact this game had on the transition from distributing games on floppy to CD, The Seventh Guest by itself is a memorable, unique experience that is both charming, cheesy, creepy, but always haunting. These days, it may not look like much, but back in 93, the seventh guest was a revolution in computer gaming. Sure enough, the actual game wasn't much more than fancy rendered puzzles connected by walking through a 3D location through point and click, but that's overlooking the unbeatable atmosphere that a few days to this day can hope to match. A cast of D-class actors hammed in some very terrible but fun performances, captured an extremely low-resolution video on a blue screen, and injected into 3D scenes. 2. Under a Killing Moon under a Killing Moon was the first of three interactive movie games in the series of Tex Murphy, the private investigator living in a future San Francisco. While not necessarily a better game than Pandora Directive as they are very similar in tone and gameplay, it still comes up higher simply because of its innovative gameplay combination. It combined the freedom of moving in 3D with lots of full-motion video cutscenes, morphing into a strange but fantastic hybrid that would reward puzzle solving and dialogue picking typical of any adventure games, but with the freedom to move around as you wished, while being rewarded with entertaining and very cheesy avenues. 3. Robert O. Williams' Phantasmagoria The top three, and for a reason. Phantasmagoria is famous for more than one reason, and it's well worthy of its reputation. A good old-fashioned ghost story, combined with some extremely gruesome but effective gore and deaths, a rape thrown in for good measure, a brief instance of nudity, fantastic music, t great acting, some genius scary situations, and some really terrible mixing between F and V capturing, green screening, and rendering. The result is one of the best and most popular F and V games in history. Phantasmagoria tells a story similar to The Shining, in which a couple moves into a large mansion with a dark history filled with evil spirits. 4. The Pandora Directive The Pandora Directive was the sequel to the game number two on this list, Under a Killing Moon. It once again starred Chris Jones as the good-hearted but ever-sarcastic Tex Murphy as he uncovered more dark secrets, this time relating to Roswell and Aliens. It was a surprisingly good sequel, far better than both Phantasmagoria 2 and The Eleventh Hour. It simply took everything that was good about the first game, stuck with it, and remain faithful to everything the fans loved about the original. 5. The Beast Within, a Gabriel Knight mystery. The Beast Within was a very similar game to Phantasmagoria 1 and 2, considering it was made by Sierra and followed the very same tight mix of point-and-click gameplay and full-motion video. A part of a series that began with Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Fathers, which was a much more traditional adventure game, and ended with Gabriel Knight 3, which changed the gameplay to 3D anyway. Beast Within was an atmospheric mystery of a game focusing on werewolves in Germany. It was entertaining but far from the memorable and haunting experience of Phantasmagoria, which also was released in 1995. 6. The Eleventh Hour The sequel to the revolutionary Seventh Guest had an exceptional amount of hype behind it. Carried on the reputation of the first game, this was destined to be Year of the Game, Unfortunately, the game turned out to be a disappointment in many ways, even if I personally found it to be both memorable, nostalgic, and entertaining. It wasn't really scary anymore. Many scenes were filmed in broad daylight with actors portraying real living characters, and it turned out to be a completely identical game as the previous. You still ran around in the same mansion solving puzzles. 7. Tex Murphy Overseer Released near the end of the f &D period, the concept of the Tex Murphy games had started to wear a little thin, especially in the light of the oncoming 3D FPS revolution. The story wasn't exactly up to par compared to the two first games either, 
but fans of the franchise found enough to love an overseer. Despite some issues with a slightly changed control system, the game was fun, and Chris Jones put up yet another hilarious performance as the likable Tex Murphy. But it was still all in all pretty much the same as the two last games, and the gaming world had moved forward with large steps by the time of release. 8. Night Trap Night Trap was a famous game, but not for the right reasons. It was the subject of a lot of controversy regarding violence towards women, nudity, sexuality, and all sorts of unfair complaints that had nothing to do with the game, because it turned out that the game was very tame in all aspects, and this controversy was far more overdone than the actual game. Night Trap was a full-motion video game where you observe girls in a house through cameras. It still comes up higher simply because of its innovative gameplay combination. It combined the freedom of moving in 3D with lots of full-motion video cutscenes, morphing into a strange but fantastic hybrid that would reward puzzle-solving and dialogue-picking typical of any adventure games. 9. Phantasmagoria – A Puzzle of Flesh I'd tell you to stay far away from this game for many reasons, but there is a certain amount of mystery to the story during most of the game, and the gore, violence, and sexuality was very dramatic. It was also one of the first f &D games, or even games from what I know, to openly show gay relations, along with s and fetishes and various other things. It never stepped over the line and presented those things in a relatively tasteful manner. The gay character was in fact the most likable of the characters. 10. Harvester Okay, so the game itself was bad. That isn't the reason why it's on this list. It's the rather gruesome content that this game was filled with. Content most movies won't be showing you either. It's not that the effects are well done or the graphics are that good either. In fact, most of the game playing sucks in all the technical aspects, but the game seemed to be just made for one purpose, to push the limits of acceptable content. It's on this list because one has to adore the way it deliberately tries to write the most brutal, perverted, and sick type of story and characters in any game that I can recall. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comment section below. Before you go, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.